Good morning, everybody. So let me start off today by showing you what the guys got picked. A bunch of beautiful plum tomatoes. And then over here they got eggplant, Cuban, Italian, bell peppers. I see a butternut and spaghetti, pimento, snack peppers, the small Italian, and just a bunch of more bell and one Italian back here in the back. I'm starting off the day here by pulling the weeds out of the potatoes that my dad just dug. And I actually had to help him while he was digging because what was happening was as he was going through the potatoes, all these weeds were getting caught up in the digger and then the potatoes were getting roughed up. So I had to pull them back through so that everything would flow nice. But now that we got that done, like I said, I'm coming back through pulling these weeds out. So that way later when we want to come through and pick these up, it'll be simple. You can see under all these weeds though that the potatoes are actually really nice. So what we gotta do now is come back through with the tractor and sprayer and just kill these weeds on top so that for the rest of the season, we can dig potatoes with ease instead of having this trouble every time. Now we're moving on to cabbage. This first variety here is Savoy. It's more of a curly leaf, sweeter cabbage. A lot of people use them for piggies. And it's really simple to pick, especially if you have a sharp knife like I do here. So now we're moving on to regular cabbage. Now this is actually our last patch. So this is really nice and young and it's easy cutting. But we actually grow three varieties of cabbage. We grow the Savoy, which I already showed you. Now we're on the regular. We also grow flat. But like I said, since this patch is still young, we're not gonna be cutting that. It's just not ready. So we're gonna stick to these two varieties for right now. Now to top off this bin, we're gonna finish it with Brussels sprouts. And we didn't have our loppers, so that you can see me just hacking at it with the knife. Oh, now like I said, the knife's pretty sharp, so I didn't have much trouble, and it's actually kind of fun. But these Brussels sprouts are looking really nice. We did have a little bit of trouble with the bottom getting a little bit too ready, and the tops not getting ready enough. Like they're bigger at the bottom and smaller at the top, but we found that if you cut the tops off when they're still a little bit young, they'll ripen a little more evenly throughout the whole stock. Right here, I cut the top off one. And then I go right back to hacking. So then after I get them cut, we have to pull the leaves off. Now as you can see, I pull them sideways instead of down because if you pull them down, you run the risk of snapping the Brussels sprouts off, and obviously we don't want to do that. We try and keep them as nice as possible. And we try and move as fast as possible because it takes a while and there's a lot of leaves. That's why you can kind of see me going pretty fast and just kind of ripping on them. And then after we get the leaves off, as I was saying, some of the bottom ones get a little bit bad and they get a little bit big. So what we do is we just snap them off and keep all the good ones on. So this is what it looks like now that we're done and ready to go to market. So now that we're done with Brussels sprouts, me and dad are gonna move on to washing peppers, as you can see. I'm putting them through, he's taking them off. They come out of the washer where that black flapper is, come onto the donuts to dry off, and then come onto the round table. We can pull them off easy and then pack them in crates. Now we're moving on to Red Bell, and I can definitely say we are truly blessed with how beautiful our peppers are this year, but it definitely did not come easy. It took a lot of work to get the peppers to be this nice. So now we're down at my end of the washer, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the giant Marconi out of the basket and putting them parallel with the rollers so that they roll nice and they're not dirty going through out to my dad. We wanna make sure all the peppers have a good cleaning. So now I'm moving on to the small Italian. And these are a lot easier because with them being so small, they don't wanna turn on the rollers and then fly right through. So then here we are on the cherry peppers. And these are really easy because I don't have to use my hands at all. They just roll nice, I can put them right on the belt and they go through with no problems. So then now we're on the Cuban. 
And again, these are kind of like the large Italian. They do want to turn sideways if I don't help them out a little bit. So I put them on the rollers just like the large Italian, the giant Marconi, and I don't really have much problem. And then I'm on the eggplant. Eggplant, I have to wash the bottoms because with the way they grow, the bottoms of them kind of want to sit on the ground and get dirty. So I just have to rub them off a little bit and then they're good to go. All right, so now we're done washing all the peppers and eggplant. So we're coming up to the field, picking up the pickles and cucumbers that the guys got. And as you can tell, they're pretty muddy from all the rain we've been getting. And you can also see the pickle plants aren't doing so hot. And that's because early on they got that disease and then we got all that rain and now the nights are getting colder so nothing's ripening as fast so just a combination of everything um, this time of year especially it'll be a struggle for pickles now hopefully we'll have them for about another two weeks we like to have them until frost but I just don't think they're gonna make it this year so now that we're back to the shed we're gonna move into washing the pickles you can see some of them are a little bit misshaped that's just because that's what starts to happen when the plants start to die. Then here we are, cucumbers. These are still really nice, as you can see. They're nice, firm, and skinny, and they have nice shape yet. moving on to red beets. You can kind of see me pressing down on them with my hands and that's just because they're so muddy. I'm trying to get all the dirt off. Now we're moving on to potatoes. Dad dug about 60 baskets I think and uh, our helpers had to go home so it was just me and him doing it. But it wasn't so bad like I said once I got those weeds pulled off it was pretty simple. And the potatoes were beautiful. We got a ton of them. They were just laying thick as you can see them here. All right, so once we got the potatoes done and we took them back in the shed, we washed them and onions. But now I'm moving on to like gourds and squash. So what I'm doing here is, this is actually a new gourd that we're growing. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a really neat little pumpkin with a bunch of warts on it. You can kind of see it here. When they're not fully ripe, the orange part will actually be green and those green warts will be like a whitish yellow. So that's how we know they're nice and ripe. So I'm going to finish up this basket and then carry it back to the truck. I'm going to get about two or three of these and then move on to the next kind. So now I'm moving on to another gourd called the Punkymon. And these are all kind of picked the same way. You can either snap them off or clip them. Depends on whatever I feel is easier. But this is what they're supposed to look like. They're supposed to be all white with those orange stripes. They're not quite ready. If they have a little bit of green on them, you'll probably see me pick some, kind of like that one right there I got my hands on. But after you get them off the plant, what'll happen is they'll actually ripen themselves. Unless they're too green, then they won't ripen and they will just rot. So the next gourd is called a Casparita. And these are actually my favorite gourd out there right now. They're really simple to pick, and when they're ripened properly, they're just such a perfect white, and they look beautiful. You probably noticed me wearing gloves and long sleeves, and that's because these plants are so picky that if you don't have gloves and pants and long sleeve shirts on, by the time you're done, your arms will be red with rashes. So now I'm moving on to the orange Eda, and as you can obviously see, these ones are not orange. This one's almost completely green, and it's not because it's not ripe, but it's actually because it cross-pollinated with something. You can see the orange speckles on there. I think they look really cool. There's actually a good strip of them right here that I'm picking, that I'm getting a lot of them, and I just think they look awesome. It's kind of like somebody painted them, but it's completely natural. So this is what they're actually supposed to look like. These are really nice also, especially when they're completely ripe. Again, if they're not completely ripe, They'll be a little bit green. They won't be that brilliant orange, but this one is really, really nice. Exactly what they're supposed to look like. Another thing I like about these is they snap off the plants really easy. You don't really have to use clippers with anything, but these especially just pop off like butter. 
So now I'm moving into what's called a weeby little. And I think they call it a weeby little because it looks like a tiny little baby pumpkin. These are very popular at our markets. We sell them for a dollar a piece and they just fly off the table. And I can understand why to make a table look nice. All right, so now I'm moving on to actual gourds. And the trouble with gourds is there's so many different kinds and shapes and sizes and colors that you never know which ones to pick. But I just decided to just pick one area and move on because I could go through the whole field picking out all these cool different ones, but it would just take me too long and I gotta get done and move on with my day. All right, so I just got done picking. Here's what everything looks like. We got the Weeby Littles. That's a new one back there. I don't know the name of that one. These are Casparitas. We got the Butternut, uh, the Pumpkin Mons, the Spaghetti Squash, more Casparitas, and then just your regular gourds. And then I have four more baskets of the same stuff in my other truck. But uh, all in all, it only took me like an hour to pick all this stuff. Went really fast. Mom helped me with a little bit of it. So I think I'm going to call it a wrap for this video. Um, we're going to take all this stuff down tomorrow and wash it all. Tomorrow's Sunday. But uh, that way we can take it out to the market and get it all set up pretty. And then we'll also have some extras here for market on Monday. So as always, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.